So my life, so my life, my time, my all shall worship you. So my life. So my life, so my life, my time, my hope shall worship you. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the honor. Father, we give you the adoration. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon this service. Father, visit us tonight. Touch somebody. Heal somebody, liberate somebody. Change somebody's story. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you and relating with you. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Go on ahead and give the Lord a big clap and a shout of praise. Welcome three people around you to the presence of the Lord as my visitor. God bless you. For my life, my time I all shall worship you welcome everyone to the midweek service actually this is more like a global midweek service because we are connected all around the world pre-confession week and i believe that the lord will do great things the sunday service was very intense we had calls from all around the world how people were touched and impacted. Some people say, please can a book come out of that message and so forth. We are trusting God that that will happen. Today we are going to move one step forward. Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15. Genesis 13, 14 to 15. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lord was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward southward eastward westward For all the land which thou seest to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever all the land which thou seest today we are looking at above only by vision above only by vision our objective is understanding the place of vision for existence at the top what is the place of vision if I want to exist at the top spiritually and the top in life on Sunday we looked at Above only by decision. Today we are now looking at above only by vision. What is the difference? Decision is choice. While vision is sight. Decision is choice. Vision is sight. Decision is what you choose. What you want. Whereas vision is what you see. This is my choice. But this is what I can see. There are different things. So decision, what you want, is not enough. It must translate into what you see. You don't only want it, you must see it coming for it to come. So decision without vision is deception is delusion when you have decided and you say this is what I want and you can't see it coming it is delusion it is deception 
it will amount to nothing. If you want it, but you can't see it, you won't have it. You want it, but you can't see it. You can't see its possibility, yet you want it. But you can't see it. You can't see that it is possible. You can't have it. So, decision must be backed with vision in order to translate into manifestation. Decision must be backed with vision so it can lay the foundation for manifestation. We're going to look at some examples in scripture of people who started with vision and where it ended them. Example number one, Abraham. That was the scripture we read. In Genesis 13 verse 14 to 15. And the Lord said unto Abraham. After that Lord was separated from him. Lift up now thine eyes. From the place where thou art. Northward. Southward. Eastward. And westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. The geographical territory of what is called Israel today was what Abraham saw afar, and he possessed it. He, he took delivery of it in his children and grandchildren, because if you start with vision, you must end with possession. Example number two, Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 3 to verse 5, and then verse 7 to verse 9. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. For behold, we are binding sheep in the field and so on. You know the story of the dream. Now you move on to verse 9. And he dreamed yet another dream. And told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamt a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And so on and so forth. Before Joseph reached the palace, he saw the palace. He saw himself in authority. He saw himself in charge. Before he, he, he reached the palace, he saw himself there. You cannot find yourself where you don't see yourself. You can't find yourself where you don't see yourself. Where you see yourself today determines where you find yourself tomorrow. That was our second example. Example number three is the example of David. David killed Goliath in his vision before he killed him with his action. Did you hear what I just said? David killed Goliath in his vision before he killed him with his action. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 45 to verse 21, the Bible said, Then said David unto the Philistine, Thou comest to me with the sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied this day. Will the Lord deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you, and I will take your head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day, Unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saved not with a sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine drew, arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. 
And David put his hand in his bag and took then a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a, with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. He was saying, I will cut off your head. With what? He now showed us what he saw in his vision. Before he told the Philistine, I will cut off your head. So, therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine and took his own sword, the man's sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off the head therewith. David had no sword in his hand. When he saw himself cutting the man's head. So as far as I am concerned, David saw the whole process. He saw himself catapulting the man. He saw the man crashing. He saw himself running to where the man was. He saw himself took the man's knife. And saw himself cut off the man's neck. When the picture was clear, the venture was there. He could venture because he carried a picture. He was rehearsing and saying what he has practiced in his mind. What is not in your mind cannot be in your end. This is very, very important. There are people who wait for things to happen by chance. No. The things won't happen by chance. They happen by choice. They happen by force. And it is the force of vision. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Somebody shout the loudest amen. Lift your hands everywhere you can say, Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Say, open my hand. Open my eyes. And put in my hands all that is required to make vision come to pass. In Jesus' name. Let us take the journey a bit further. I remember the story of an American president, a previous president of America, when he was in, in primary three, or I mean elementary two or three, or grade three, two or three. And they asked him, what do you want to become in life? This one said, I'm a doctor. This one said, I want to become. They say, what do you want to become? He said, American president. Small child in grade two. Eventually he became. Nelson Mandela, I heard, was around the age of between nine and twelve thereabout in a Methodist church in South Africa when he heard the clergyman preach. And right in that church, he developed the vision to become the president of South Africa. Even though it was difficult and it was many, many long years. But even though the vision tarry, yet it shall come to pass. At the age of 12, God's servant Bishop David Oedipo went to the village carpenter. And he said, make me a rod. And the man said, what would you like to do with this rod? He said, with this rod, I am going to deliver. This is the rod of Moses. I'm going to deliver God's people from captivity. Is he delivering people now or not? Globally, a mass. What does not cross your mind may never cross your life. This is vision. I can tell about myself in several visions. Well, as a child, I spoke spontaneously. I even told my mother the, kind, the name to call me from childhood. <laughs> a name of leadership, a name of royalty. A name of dignity from childhood. And then, by the time we stepped into ministry, vision was placed everywhere in terms of where we were going. When we came to church, to, to, to town, church hadn't started. Someone asked me, I said, what are we? I told, I told them we came for a revival work. It's not normal church work. It's not normal pace. By our first anniversary, we already had canopies outside. First anniversary celebration. The question now is, what is vision? 
Very quickly. What is vision about? The simplest way I can define vision first. Vision is seeing tomorrow. Today. You haven't ar arrived at tomorrow yet. But you can see it today. That was what happened to Joseph. In Genesis 37. Verse 5 to verse 9. All the way where we read. Number two. Vision. Is possessing the clarity. Is possessing clarity. Of desired or desirable future. Possessing clarity. Regarding a desirable future. Is clear to you. That was what happened to Abraham. Genesis. Chapter 13. Verse 14 to 15. Clarity. There is no ambiguity. Ambiguity. is clear. Number three is very exciting to me. Vision is thinking in pictures and images regarding the future. Thinking in pictures. Thinking in images. Ephesians chapter 3 and in verse 20. The Bible said unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think or imagine or imagine. It is Thought in pictures, thought in images, and imagination comes from images. Imagination is from images. Thinking in pictures, thinking in images regarding the future. In this case, your thought about tomorrow is not in words. Your thought is in pictures. Your thought is in images. What is vision? Number four. Vision is turning scriptures into pictures of both the present and the future. You turn the scriptures into pictures of both the present and the future. God spoke it, you saw it. In Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 1 to 2, he said, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run the real it. God is speaking, but you are seeing the picture. I saw when Jesus was going somewhere in Mark chapter 6 verse 33. He said, I'm going to the other side. And the people saw them departing. And many, Jesus said, let me say, Jesus said, um, our next crusade is in Nyanya. And the people saw Jesus departing. And many knew him. And they ran afoot. Out of all cities. Out went them. And came to see. The people arrived at the venue before Jesus arrived. I saw the picture. When we went to Jalingo for crusade. The stadium was filled before opening prayer. The people outwent him. They arrived at the venue before him. They outwent him. So, when God speaks, he expects you to see. Don't just hear what he said. See it. Concerning the present and concerning the future. You say your children shall be olive plants round about the table. Your children shall be olive plants. What I see is that olive plants carry oil. So I cannot have a child that lacks anointing. I can't. <laughs> Not one. If they... If there are hundred, all of them are olive plants. All. So 
you see the olive? The, the leaf of the olive is oily. It's shiny, glossy. So that is, and that is why God, you, God gives descriptions so that, you, so, that, so that you can see the picture. Somebody say amen. I prophesy to somebody here today in the name of Jesus you shall see the picture say a louder amen say a louder amen shout the loud most amen so that is vision vision is turning scriptures into pictures of both the present and the future and finally number five for today Vision is insight into purpose. That is, God happened to show you your purpose. Or a particular purpose in a particular direction. And then you began to see into that purpose. Insight into purpose. The meaning of that is, you can like dash, images and pictures of what you perceive. To be God's purpose for your life. That is vision. Seeing images and pictures. Of what you perceive. To be God's purpose for your life. What God wants you to do. What God wants you to be. Where he wants you to occupy. Seeing it in pictures and images. It's called vision. Where you perceive God wants you to be in life. Seeing the pictures. And the images of it. It's called vision. Jeremiah chapter 1 and in verse 5. Bible said, Before I formed thee, I knew thee in the belly. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Today, I prophesy to somebody a fresh baptism of clarity of purpose. A fresh baptism of vision. A fresh baptism of understanding. You will not live a wasted life. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord most amen. Look at your neighbor say, don't live with an empty heart. Live with a loaded heart. Loaded with vision. To have a loaded future. Say to have a loaded future. You need a loaded heart. I was preaching the other day on the subject of ministry at the cutting edge. It was a minister's conference. And I said. The difference between the impact of one person's talk. And another is the vision from where they are talking. What is driving the talk? Maybe I'll leave that for another day. What is the impact of vision in placing somebody at the top? What is the impact of vision in existence at the top? Number one, vision brings light insight and wisdom to life brings light brings insight brings wisdom Matthew 6 22 he said if thy if thy 6 two, two, the light of the body is the eye Light is vision. The light of the body is his vision. That is I. If therefore your, thine eye be single, if your vision is focused and clear, your whole body shall be full of light. But if your eye is evil, that is you don't have a vision, your whole body will be full of darkness. And if the light that is in you be darkness. How great is that darkness? 
In Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and in verse 14, the Bible said, The wise man's eyes are in his head. So there is a connection between the vision and the mentality. But the fool walketh in darkness. The wise man's eyes are in his head. Maybe the foolish man's eyes are in his legs. In Daniel chapter 5 and in verse 11. The Bible said, There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And in the days of thy father there is light in him. And understanding and wisdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout the loudest hallelujah. Shout the loud most hallelujah. Lord, my vision is to drop a million dollars every year or every quarter for the evangelization of the lost to rake in the harvest of souls. And I am trusting you out of this property business. Out of this commodities business. To arrive at that resources. Lord, this is my vision. And you have the picture in your mind. One day I signed a check in advance. Of how much I would like to give to God. If I have such a money. And placed it somewhere. I just tuck it here and there. It came to pass, and came to pass, and came to pass. Now, since what happened? By the time the, that vision is intact, light begins to flood your head of what to do and steps to take to make this vision happen. Direction begins to flood. Wisdom, wisdom begins to flood. Am I communicating? When you lack vision, you can't have wisdom. Most visionless people, I don't want to say foolish, are wisdomless people. See the youth of these days, no vision for their life. Yo, man, they join courtism, they join gambling, they join alcoholism. Why? Because he doesn't have a vision for his life. So he thinks that all roads are roads. Vision gives you light, gives you insight, gives you wisdom. When David had the vision of bringing down Goliath, he got insight that there is an open opening in the forehead of Goliath. And that opening was big enough to carry a stone. Vision gives you light. And when you have light, you shine. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. Arise, shine. For your light is come. You just stand out. Vision gives you wisdom. And when you have wisdom, you reign. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 16. Concerning wisdom, is, wisdom said, By me kings reign. By me princes reign. By, by, yeah, 15. by me kings reign and princes decree justice so with vision you step into light light makes you shine with vision you connect wisdom and wisdom causes you to rule vision brings light inside wisdom to life number two vision bets action and motion Men of vision can't rest. It bets you action and motion. Habakkuk chapter 2 and in verse 1 to 4. 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch and will set me upon a tower. And will watch to see what he will say unto me. And what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. That he may run. Now read at it. When you are a man of vision, you are a man on the run. 
And when you are on the run, no devil can stop you from reaching the top. That is how vision takes people to the top. There is, I am, there is a time frame I am looking at for certain things to happen. I'm looking at a certain time frame. I'm talking about myself now. I'm looking at a certain time frame within which certain things must happen. So I'm on the run. Two weeks time, we're in Canada. Three weeks after that, we're in Canada and we're in Baltimore, Maryland. And three weeks after that, we're in Houston, Texas. And Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's July. And then we step into August and here we are in Bogota, Colombia. And Caracas, Venezuela. And then we back off from there into September and here we are in Angola, Hill and the Rivers Crusade as well as our neighbor here, what's the name? Equatorial Guinea. And then from there we step into October. Hola, hola. Tanzania, Dar es Salaam. Malawi. And from there, where else? We have homeland crusades, Sokoto, Gombe, Asaba, um, Anambra, Anambra is pending, and then um, Uyo. Pakistan is calling, India is calling. The, as we're coming from, Kenya, Dr. Mr. Nenches took a video of me and I didn't know in the aircraft. And what was it? I'm not sure I can post it. I'm not sure because I'm some, you know, we have a generation of people who misinterpret everything. A, a pile of books on, of files on the table. Pile of books on the table. Bible. For the four files for the four and a half hours of the journey Many of those who did the tongue was on, all the files I carried was treated before the journey was over. The work the book was on. Sunday message was dealt with. Commanding the day prayer points set. Wow. Those who did not preach were more tired than me. Some logged on to the sleep net. World Wide Web dot sleep. Don't come. Not dot com. Oh, sleep. Don't come. What is it that puts you under such a pressure? There is a vision with a time target. Certain things that must be at certain times. Calls and messages were being sent home. Supervising work at home while we are there. All manner of supervisions. There are certain projects we will talk to you about as the time approaches, which are also in the, in, the, in, the, in the offing. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you are too lazy, it is important that it is, it is when you are too lazy about life, it may be a point that the heart is empty. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. Somebody say a loud amen. While we were there on the crusade ground, acoustic album was released on Friday online. We are still at the crusade ground. One bishop called me and said, how, how are you? How are you doing these things?
how is it that you have time to do you have the time for crusade you have the time for midnight prayer you have the time for studio to record song It depends on what you want out of life. Time is available if you know what to do with your life. Is there anybody here who has not had time to bath today? Or time to eat because you are too busy? Or time to brush your mouth? The things that are important to your life, there is time for them. Hallelujah. If they are important to you, there is time. If they are not important, there may not be time. Vision. It gives birth to motion and gives birth to acceleration. I've gone to number two already. I hope you wrote it down. Vision bets action. It bets motion. People of vision are people of action. They are people of motion. They are people of acceleration please take note of this the absence of vision is the abundance of stagnation the absence of vision is the abundance of inaction and stagnation the absence of vision is the abundance of inaction and stagnation if you can't see where to go you don't live where you are if you can't see where you are to go, you don't live where you are. Vision bets action, motion, and acceleration. Number three, vision enlarges capacity. It enlarges capacity. Enlarges capacity. Genesis chapter 30. Verse 37, we saw how Jacob painted some painting in front of his animals. And the animals developed the capacity to deliver something that was almost contrary to their nature. You know the story. Black animal, black colored sheep or purely white colored sheep. He painted some color in front of them and they were giving back to the color they were seeing. If it was striped, they were giving back to stripe, brown and white, brown and white, or brown and black. They were just giving back according. What happened? The vision the animals were seeing entered into their system and changed their capacity. He gave them to bring forth capacity beyond their natural ability do you understand what i'm saying this is this is the best way i can describe it you are dealing with 10 million 50 million range of money suddenly you developed a vision to deal with nations multinationals in billions in dollars this is the range I trust God to occupy and dwell in. Because with this range I am now, I can't do much for the kingdom of God and I can't do much for the lives of people. As you develop that vision, all of a sudden, the capacity to begin to deal in that range begins to develop. Now somebody who is only used to 10 million naira, if he saw a million naira, he saw 10 million naira, he saw 20 million naira, he is comfortable. If you give him one billion, you are the one who destroyed him. You just finish person for nothing. His, his, his normal terrain is 10 million. 15 million. Out of that 10 million, he will buy a car of 7 million or 8 million. And then use some 2 million to buy some dress and, and buy resource that he will be posing with. And after a short while, he begins to look for money to fuel his car that he bought. You land him one billion. Oh boy. You finish the man. He will run crazy on the spot. <laughs> I've seen someone like that before. He got some money. 
He drove a car parked by the roadside. All of you, line up. Take. You take. You take. You take. You know the prodigality of, you know the generosity of insanity. How a madman can pull his cloth and say, take. You know the benevolence of alcoholism. He ordered beer for everybody. He's like, oh boss. <laughs> Since this evening, have you drank anything? The way your mouth is. <laughs> the way your mouth is, it looks like you have not drank anything. Manager, give him one. <laughs> give him one. Give him one bottle there. Just charge it to my account. He won't give the man money to buy food. But as many bottles as he want to drink, he will give him liquid fire. Liquid hellfire. That is how, you know, because they don't have, he doesn't have the capacity to deal in that level. So when you give, you push him to that level, you destroy him. It's like a pastor that you said, come and pastor 20,000 people. And his capacity is 500 people. He will abuse everybody away. You just stand and say, look at you. Because I'm standing here, you think I'm your age mate? He will mispreach, misbehave. His spiritual stamina is not enough to accommodate 10,000 people. So he will so preach them away until they become the 500 people that his spirit is used to. But if you give 500 people to a man who has 10,000 capacity, you will grow them until they reach that level. That is the power of vision. In all of a sudden, you become more mature than your age. Because you are seeing things beyond your age. You are thinking, in, thinking things beyond your size. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are your, your, your mind is, is trading in, in terrains beyond your size. And all of a sudden, your capacity is enlarged. I prophesy to somebody here today, in a short while from now, you are shifting in capacity. By the power and by virtue of what you are hearing, you are shifting in capacity. By the power of what you are hearing, you are shifting in capacity. If you are saying amen, shout the Lord and say amen. Give the Lord a praise and take your seat. If somebody bless you tonight, say amen. I have three or four more. Time is going, but just permit me. Let me finish this one tonight. The other Wednesday, I, 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 I cut it into two because I couldn't. But number four, vision is a form of spiritual communication that God both hears and answers. It's a form of spiritual communication. I don't know if you have heard that. Human beings speak, they speak with voice, with sound. But apart from speaking with sound, God speaks with pictures. Ha, all right. Genesis chapter 15 verse 5. God did this a lot with Abraham. And God brought him forth abroad. And said, look now toward the heaven. Let me give you a picture. I want to say something to you. But the best way to say it to you is through pictures. Look at, look at the stars. Tell them. Tell the stars. If you are able to number them, so shall thy seed be. In case I say your seed will be like the stars of heaven and the sand of the seashore and you don't know what it means. Come out and see it. God is communicating in pictures. Now, in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1, where we read, he said, I will stand upon my watch. Now, verse 2. All right. All right. Okay, verse 1. I will stand on my, on my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I'm reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. And make it plain upon tables. That he may run. I will watch to see. What he will say. 
So God speaks in pictures. He speaks in words. But that is not the important thing now. What is very, very, that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that apart from God speaking in pictures, God listens and hears pictures, visions, and imaginations. He listens and hears. He himself speaks in pictures. He also listens to pictures. He listens to visions. He listens to imaginations. To God, your imagination is a communication. Your vision is a communication. When you have vision and imagination, you don't need extra voice for God to hear what you are saying. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, he said unto him that is able to, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. So God hears and does what we ask. He also hears and does that word think is the Hebrew is, is from the word imagine. The NIV calls it imagine. Able to do what we imagine or what we picture. Let this transform your life. Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 to 25. He said it shall come to pass. Before they call, I will answer. You haven't spoken, but he has answered. What is he answering? He's answering your thought. Answering your, your pictures. Answering the images. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Somebody say aloud, loud amen. Can I say this to you? Vision may be visible to man, but it is audible to God. It's audible, audible. It is audible. It is audible. When you picture things, when you imagine things, you may assume them to be thought or imagination, but God is receiving them as communication. Am I communicating? Is anybody hearing me now? God is receiving them as communication. So when you join vision to prayer, you are talking to God twice. You are talking through words. You are talking through pictures. That's why most of us are not at the same level. Because some of us, the vision, the picture in our heart is plenty. It's just plenty. There are things we have not said. So the people of the world. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. This place was a picture before. It became a reality. I gathered the architects together. And I told them what I, was, I saw. And what they should draw. About eight drawings were brought. And I looked at them from different quarters. Including the Coca-Cola Dome. In uh, George, Atl Atlanta or so. And I say, this, 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 no. One, two, three, four, no. But this is the one. But even this one, knock off this pillar. Knock this, knock this out, knock this out, knock this out. This is not meant to be here. This is not meant to be there. And they say, oh no. The cost of construction will be so massive. If there is no pillar anywhere at all. I said, yes. It's going to be a field. Where anywhere you stand, you can see anybody. There's no pillar blocking them, anybody's view anywhere. The cost of construction will multiply many times. I said, yes, the owner of the construction has enough money. And he had told me before, spare no cost. So each of these beams, the one with the hand like this, is one trailer of cement. Each one like this. One stand like this one you're seeing with the golden one. So one trailer was buried. Next one, the burial of another trailer. Next one. Not to talk of iron rods. And the owner, the owner of the construction. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And I'm going to talk about that later. So it was very clear. I couldn't have said move this pillar or this or that if I didn't see if I didn't know what they were to design where the pulpit was to be everything was clear capacity somebody say loud amen 
from this moment I prophesy the Lord will empower your vision and they shall come to pass number five vision brings man into alignment and agreement with God especially when you are seeing what God wants you to see especially when you are painting this picture of scripture you are brought into agreement into alignment Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 he said moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying Jeremiah what seest thou and I said I see a rod of an almond tree then said the Lord unto me you have seen well that is what I want you to see and because you have seen well me and you are together i will hasten my word to perform it when you see it well the word of god is in a hurry for performance when you see what god wants you to see when you see as god sees that's the same thing with habakkuk write the vision make you play wrong the vision is for an appointed time and it, it shall come to pass. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, How can two walk together except they be agreed? Matthew chapter 18 verse 19. And I'd like you to look at that. 18 verse 19. I, again I say unto you, That if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. You agree to touch this. If two of you, how much more you and Jehovah God, you are in agreement. Lord, you want to save the lost. I have the vision for the salvation of the lost. I want to join forces with you. Yes, sir. Here am I. And God said, you want to join forces with me? Come, child. Let's go together. Let's go. Wherever you are, doors open. Signs, wonders, miracles. Supernatural supply. Is it not amazing to you that we go for crusade around the world, no offering is taken on crusade ground, and yet we are going all the time without stress and pressure? Isn't it amazing? It's partnership with Jehovah. You came into alignment. I was speaking to someone the other day. About 30 something years ago, he was a frontline evangelist in this nation. Frontline. Healing signs wonders. But disappeared out of the scene. A few days ago, we were talking. And he said, I'm seeing all the crusades. I, I saw what God is doing here and there. He said, God is leading him back to the crusade field. I said, Yes. The crusade field is deserted. Very rare before you find up to four or five that are aggressively on the crusade field after the order of Rehad Bonke. God is, that field is, vac is, de is deserted. And he says, and he began to ask me a question. How do you do this? And how do you do that? And how do you do this? You know what he said? He said, I am ready to relearn. Relearn. I'm ready to relearn. To learn again. So I can do it. I said, sir, I am available to be of any assist, of any impute. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I said to him, when you're about to do the first crusade, let me know. It's in my mind to put massive money inside it. So that God can help a giant to wake up. And return back to the field. You don't go down by helping somebody to go up. There are at least two evangelists on the crusade field. That will give monthly financial release in six zeros. Every month. At least two. Understand? Every month. They have, their account is with us. That's from this church. We wire it straight. 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 To help them be on the field. We are doing crusades too. Yet we are releasing money to others. 
People don't understand life. One of them said, I am praying for you daily. He said, you have made life easy for us. You have made us to be doing crusade every month. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I am coming into alignment. I'm coming into agreement with you. I cannot fail. I shall not fail. In the name of Jesus. When you, when you, when you, when you catch the vision of God, you step into the same page with God. You are moving in the same direction with God and it's not possible to be stranded. It's not possible to fail. It's not possible to be cut short. Number six, and then I have one more true. Vision grants man access to the voice of God. When you catch vision and the correct vision, and you are seeing what you are meant to be seeing, God will say to you what you are meant to hear. Acts chapter 10 verse 19. And as Peter, while Peter taught on the vision, the spirit said unto him, while Peter taught on the vision, the spirit said unto him, Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, Joseph was thinking on the dream of the angel that visited him. While he taught on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. The vision that Mary had, Joseph was thinking about it. And the angel of God appeared to him to give him direction. If you don't have vision, why are you looking for direction? God speaks to those who think and who carry vision. Listen to what I wrote here. If the heart is empty, the ear cannot be open. The spiritual ear can't be open if your heart is empty. God should speak to you to do what? Some people say God is not speaking to you. To achieve what? There is no picture in your front. There is nothing that is an obsession. There is nothing that occupies your heart to fulfill for, your, for God and, uh, and, and, and for humanity and for eternity. And, and you are saying God should speak to you to do what? Vision grants access. I was on the way to London, England. My heart had been loaded with vision. How the church must explode in area one. We are running three services. First service filled to under the gallery. Second service filled up and down. Third service halfway. Lord, we need to move you. And we had been there for a long time. God gave me a word. When you return back, announce five services of grace. How many of you remember that? Five services of grace. One Sunday, suddenly, five services. From three services that were not completely filled. When that was announced, by the five services of grace, boom, 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 boom. One, two, three, four, five service jumped. It was just the fifth service that one or two people were sitting on the gallery. The rest filled. We never returned back from five services of grace. From that to six services. From six services to overflow in the premises. Overflow outside the fence. But I couldn't have heard that if there was no vision in the heart. One Sunday, 10,000 people above the, the last Sunday. God couldn't have. And that was before the branches exploded in the city. I speak to somebody here today. Jehovah God shall talk to you. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest, amen. If you are saying amen, shout amen on the top of your voice. Is there somebody who heard something today? Say amen. Finally, number seven. Vision is a guarantee of both provision and possession. When the vision is there, provision can, when, when vision is present, provision can't be absent. Whatever provision. He told Abraham, he said, as far as your eyes can see, I will give. If man can see it, God will give it. Note it down. 
If I can see it, God will give it. All the land which thou seest today will I give it. If man can see it, God will give it. Somebody say amen. Stretch your two hands in front of you. Say, Father, help me to see it clearly so I can receive it firmly. Say, help me to see it clearly so I can receive it firmly. Help me to see it clearly so I can receive it firmly. Help me to see it clearly so I can receive firmly. Help me to see it clearly so I can receive family. Say, Father, I receive deliverance from the plague of visionlessness. I receive deliverance now. Give the Lord a shout of praise. A loud a shout of praise. The Lord must shout of praise. Shout it at the top of your voice. When David saw the vision of bringing down Goliath, God gave Goliath into his hand. In conclusion, what do you do for vision to become a reality? Number one, paint the picture of the scripture. Paint the picture of the scripture. In your heart. Ensure that you have vivid pictures of what you are trusting God for. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 2. And if there are physical pictures that assist your vision, place it around yourself. I heard Mike Mudo call something vision board where he puts the various pictures of things that is in his future that he's going to step into. If God will bring Abraham out to see something so that it can be fixed in his mind, there is a place for pictures. I place Rehabonki crusade crowd picture everywhere around me my, I look for them Bomosa crusade Lagos crusade that crusade I place them everywhere today when Rehabonki crusade people see our crusade pictures in some places they say this is like our crusade Rehabonki crusade director said even though Rehabonki is dead I am happy that the spirit of mass evangelism has not left Africa pictures Somebody say a loud amen. Even some of our own crusade pictures, I'm about to print them and still put them all around me so that it can just remain there in the overflow. Our own crusade pictures, even Glory Dome overflow pictures. Am I communicating? See yourself and your family and your wife and children worshiping God together. Paint the picture. Place it somewhere. Where you see such happening and that's what you desire. Just the pictures. Use physical, you can use physical, literal pictures to assist your spiritual vision. You can. Literal pictures. Because the eyes affect the heart. Was that Lamentation chapter 3 verse 51? He said, my eye affected my heart. My eyes affect my heart. So what the eye see affects the situation of the heart. Observation can internalize vision. Number two. Assist in the fulfillment. Assist the fulfillment of the vision of others. 
anywhere possible. Assist the fulfillment of the visions of others as led by the Lord. Joseph interpreted the dreams of the butler and the baker. And that made his dreams and visions to come to pass. Genesis chapter 40, verse 5 to verse 8. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. The Bible said, Therefore all things whatsoever you will that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Anything you want people to do for you, do for them. Somebody say amen. Why am I, are we putting money into the crusade of other evangelists? We want God to give us money to fulfill our own. It's a life principle many people don't understand. I don't want to be stranded anywhere in the world. The other year you were there. Where knifers came for. They say, can we give them our facility for their annual students conference? Knifers. Dynamis Church. The Glory Dome. Can they use it? I say you have used it since. Any, any obligation? Zero. Can we make accommodation available for the students? Guaranteed. So they were here for three days, slept on camp here. Brother Billy Akoni was part of their speakers. I was a speaker and then other people. Three days, they enjoyed their life here. When the conference finished on Saturday, they didn't want to go. The children. Nigerian Medical and Dental. Medical and Dental. Is it, no, no, Dental Council. Christian Medical and Dental Association. They said they want to do their conference here this year. You are welcome. I just finished talking with someone here. Said they want to have a one-day program. It's a music program and they want to do a program to see how they can help the refugees of uh, terrorism. Some that are, you know, find a place for them. Just an awareness program. Welcome. How much are we to pay? Are we to buy diesel for the place of Nepal bill? I say zero. If you go to town to look for a sanctuary that is one tenth of this size, ask them how much you'll pay. And you people, I don't need to tell you our Nepal bill right now. What do you call that place? The band A. I don't, I don't, I don't want, to, you don't want to hear about neighbor bill right now. Right now. Band A. Here. Huh? Neighbor bill in tens of millions. No people are on the watch out for what we say here. So I will just pay the amount. It's unbelievable. Build that can build house. That can buy story building. Every time you have paid the bill, you have bought another story building. One or two. Do you understand? Nevertheless, come and use the place free of charge. The same, the Nepa bill that we are, we are using and all of that, free of charge. Why will that be done? God make a road, a way for us worldwide. Anywhere we go worldwide, make a way for us. Somebody say loud, amen. There are so many people, they are, they are just so busy with themselves. Me, myself, I. They don't have any business with nobody under heaven. A life that is self-centered and self-absorbed. Self-focused. Don't do like that. Just 
develop a little interest in somebody's life just little not too much and just be, be, be involved a little just be involved a little in somebody's life be involved a little in somebody's life and see how God changes your life assist in the fulfillment of visions of God as led by the Lord I say as led by the Lord because there are some who may present you a vision that is not of God at all or who are just trying out to see how they can dupe you Number three, define action plan. This is what I'm trusting God to achieve in my life. He said, write a vision, make a plan that he may run. That running path. What steps am I going to take in achieving vision? I think this, I will descend, we will descend on this probably by Sunday, practically. What action? Okay, I, I've made, uh, this is my decision. This is my vision. What action? What should I do? And finally, define the action. Number four, step into action. Run. That he may run. That read it. Run. Step into action. Massively. Act massively. At every given opportunity. Step into action. Step into action. Step into action. Action that requires urgency. Again, we'll talk about that by Sunday. I don't need any confirmation from you to know that you are already blessed. Would you need to confirm it? I know you are blessed. I know something has changed. I know your life is turning around. And before this year is over, you will be bigger than your size. Before this year is over, those who know you will be shocked at what God has done in your life in a short time. Stand upon your feet, everybody. You know, the word you hear and the people you come into contact with, they affect your life. I shared a testimony in Ethiopia, and the person about whom I shared the testimony posted the testimony on Instagram in America. His name is Pastor Jonathan Evangelist Jonathan Shortusworth. He posted what I said about him in Ethiopia. He cut it and pasted it on his page. All the details. Now this man has ministered for about 20 something years in ministry. He has heard about me. I just kept hearing that. He kept playing our testimony in his church. The sister that disappeared from the camp of the kidnappers, the one that uh, they took them to shoot them, and the gun of the terrorists couldn't work. All those kind of strange testimonies. He kept sharing it with his church all the time. Eh? Yes, the, yes, the students in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, yeah, in, in Plateau State. So, so what, long story made short, people told me about him, and he heard I was coming to America. He said, Can you come and preach? In our church for one day. He fixed a whole convention. To coincide with the time of my coming. That is. The convention was fixed. With my presence. As the determinant of the convention. He titled it. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. So he invited others like Bishop Doug from Ghana. And several others. To come for the convention. All I want is just one day. And I step in there prophesied ministered brutally at the end he demanded for impartation i pulled my suit laid it on him that's the pastor of the church overall big pastor of the church he was under power for about one hour church closed and left he was there long story made short he said i want to i told him i would like to come there again the, the, the hunger was too much. I'm sure we have the clip of the, of, of the people there. Hunger was so much. I said, can you get a stadium? Let's do a, 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 a crusade. And that town is a town of Catherine Kuhlman. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So it's very, very historic. And to me, it's, it's an ancient well of revival that needs to be redug. Yes, her street. You know, we passed through her street, right? Uh, the off, where her office was. 
You know? So, I made declarations to him. All, everything changed. Everything changed for Pastor Jonathan. Service began to explode. He would test me. He said, we have crossed one so number of thousands today for the first time in America. He has gone to Dallas, Texas. Do you have any meet, need for any meeting in Dallas? I have so and so much hectares or acres of property they have just given to us, our church. And then now, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a group of billionaires called him and said, we have so and so property. Take a look at it, whether you like it. What $15 million dollars he has a hotel inside. Big space for crusade. For anything. All facilities. You like it? You can have it. For how much? Free of charge. For how long? Forever. He sent me the pictures on the spot. <laughs> you have heard nothing yet. He said... If when you come, you don't need to ask for crusade venue anymore. We already have place where the crusade can hold. Do you know what he said? He said, Pastor, thank you for imparting me. Under one year. The same with Pastor Zenzo in Michigan, right? right? Under one year. Now, one man came and said, Do you like this Falcon 50 aircraft? Have it, um, this one is not free of charge. Have it and use it for all programs you want. I will maintain the aircraft. All you need to do is to fuel it. And I can put the mini your ministry's logo on it if you desire. Unction reload. Uh, there is oil, oh. not water. Oh. Don't be too familiar with it. Oh. This story I'm sharing, I'm sharing now, I shared it in Ethiopia, and the man caught the story and pasted it on his, on his, on his, on his page to confirm I am the one they are talking about. And what the man is talking is true. I won't be shocked if he, if he caught this one now. That is, our meeting is not one year yet with that man. It's not one year yet. Maybe eight months. We met for the first time in August, right? It's not one year yet. And that's why I'm saying before this year is over, as you run the path of vision, there are drastic things that will happen in your life that will take your generation by surprise. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. There are drastic things in your life that will take your generation by surprise. Mahashata Kalaga. Uh, even though our time is a, a bit gone, but I'd like us to take just two minutes and pray father let the spirit the bible said as he spoke to me the spirit entered into me let the spirit of this message step into me so i can walk in the realm of vision and walk in the realm of action and walk in the realm of manifestation lift your voice and say father father i ask i ask for the impartation for the impartation of the spirit of, the spirit of this message of this message in the name of jesus, name of jesus. Help, me, lord, help me lord to walk, to walk in the realm, in the realm of, vision, of vision in the realm, in the realm of, action, of action in the realm, in the realm of, manifestation. of manifestation oh lord, oh, lord. in the name of jesus name of open jesus. your mouth and pray Pray, pray, pray.
precious name. Lift your hands and give him the praise, so shall it be.